good morning everyone and uh, welcome to the webinar today uh, we will be talking about uh, envisagecape and sar analytics in r pro so before starting the webinar let's uh, go through what about the organization issue so as we all know the slides depicts who we are so isri is the most uh, company that builds most powerful mapping and spatial analytics products in the world. We have around more than 100 offices across the world and professionals from 67 different countries working together in the GIS and the remote sensing domains to deliver the best products for uh, 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 for, uh, for the organization which uh, are working to, uh, togetherly for improving the geographic and dynamic data and representing it for the benefit of the users. <clears throat> So ISRI as a global company has 100 plus offices around the world with 130, uh, 130 plus presence in the countries and more than two and a half lakh customers worldwide, uh, including 2000 plus partners. Now talking about our presence in India, we are headquartered in Noida with various regional offices across uh, the across India, in Bangalore, Hyderabad, Mumbai, uh, Chandigarh, <coughs> Kolkata and Chennai. So we are working with in India since 1996 with various uh, government, uh, commercial, educational, <clears throat> educational organization for various domains like water resources, agriculture, insurance, urban planning, land resources, agriculture, environment, and many other. Now, coming on to the topic that we are going to be covering today is NB SARScape and SAR Analytics in ARCO. But before starting that, to give you a glimpse about what is NB? So NB is a complete robust image processing software, which is utilized by various GIS professionals, scientists, image analysts to extract the meaningful information from the remote sensing data. As we all know that nowadays, each and every, the passing of each and every day, lots of satellites are coming with various sensors, which have various spatial resolution, spectral and temporal resolution. So to ingest those data, to support those, data and to extract the meaningful information from those data, we need a software that can ingest all those. So NV is a single chat platform for that. So NV can be utilized on desktop, on enterprise platform, and as well as the cloud platform. So whichever the user is comfortable, the NV can be deployed over it, and the advantages of NV can be leveraged for extracting the meaningful information from your remote sense data. So NV as a software uh, supports uh, lots of sensors that are coming into that. So more than three, uh, more than 100 plus spectral satellite sensors that are available in the remote sensing domain are supported, ranging from hyperspectral data, multispectral data, SAR data, lidar, uh, panchromatic data, uh, aerial data, drone data. So all there is a data support in the single platform for all those data. Talking about the ArcGIS integration. So as we all know that NB and ArcGIS will go hand in hand. So so whatsoever analysis you are performing in NV or in ArcPro can be taken to both the platform without any hiccups and the analysis can be represented in a beautiful way so as the end user can get the maximum benefit of that. Automated workflow. So as we are working in the remote sensing domain, we are generally encountering various applications related to change detection, view shed analysis, anomaly detection, classification, and many more. So NV have a lot of these automated workflows where the user gets a dedicated step-by-step -step workflow to perform this analysis and gets to it and results. Extensible module. So on the top of NB, we require certain extensible modules which are specific to specific exercises which needs to be performed. For example, we have various modules related to deep learning, dam extraction, atmospheric correction, photogrammetry, SAR analytics, NITF. These modules are extensively used for various applications related to disaster response and deep learning. It's a very extensive module which is uh, utilized, which requires no programming and can be utilized by any professional having the remote sensing domain idea. Accessibility. So accessibility means it can be accessed over yeah, any platform. I already told about it can be deployed on desktop, enterprise, and cloud platform. So it's very accessible, can be uh, used by the end users over any platform which is comfortable to. Now coming about the modules. So as I was talking about on the top of NB, we have a lot of modules to quickly and easily perform 
highly specialized tasks that can give you uh, advanced for performing advanced image analysis for getting very really accurate results. So starting on with the feature extraction modules to extract this module is very extensively used to extract features of your interest from all types of imagery. So you can ingest your SAR imagery, multi-spectral drone, aerial imagery over this and extract your feature of interest, which can be building footprints, roads, uh, agriculture areas, and many more uh, depending upon your application. Dem extraction. So dem extraction module can be really used to extract high resolution dem, which are used in various applications related to water, agriculture, and many other from high resolution stereo pairs. ACM. So as we are downloading the data, it contains a lot of atmospheric errors, which needs to be corrected before we start the processing over those data. So atmospheric correction module contain all those parameters which can be ingested so as to correct your data and get the most accurate Photogrammetric module. So photogrammetric modules can be used, is used for performing auto rectification, image registration, and georeferencing of your data, which are we doing very uh, con continuously over our data that we are working on. And if you have, it's a defense related module, which are really used in the defense specific purposes. Deep learning module. So deep learning module is a very easy and uh, a very easy and specific tool for performing deep learning exercises, which includes no programming and you can quickly create and train your model to get your specific classified results. And we crop science module, agriculture specific module, which is used to count crops, detect crop health, count crop gaps and perform hotspot analysis for getting the final agricultural results very accurately and very precise. Now, this was all about the NV and its module that we have. Now, coming up back again on the topic that we will be covering is the synthetic aperture in R. So before starting what is NV SARS, we will have a short introduction to what is synthetic aperture in R. So synthetic aperture in R, as we all know, we are continuously hearing that it's a microwave data which makes its own radiation and doesn't require an illumination source. But why we are using SAR? As we all know that multispectral data uh, are giving, multispectral sensors are giving images only during the daytime. So, uh, but sometimes we require for specific exercises to capture the images during the night. So SAR is sunlight independent, day at night acquisitions are there, so SAR can be utilized for that purposes. No weather influence. So as we know that during flood events, we require specific images that has happened on the flood time, but multispectral sensors are covered, multispectral data that is coming from the sensors are covered with clouds. So on that note, SAR data can be utilized because it's not weather independent, no atmospheric influence and various sensitive surface parameters, which includes roughness, geometric shape, water content can be extracted from the SAR data. But working with the SAR data includes certain challenges which includes the side-looking side geometry, which have where, where we encounter various geometric distortions, speckles, which needs to be removed, which needs to be corrected before we start processing. Insert error sources, which is the peak correlation error, which are coming with the SAR data, which needs to be corrected. So there are a lot of uh, advantages and challenges which are included with working when, when we are working with the synthetic aperture radar data. Now, but the advantages over that is information that we derive from this electromagnetic waves. So these can be really helpful in various applications related to agriculture, forestry, water, urban. So which includes amplitude information, phase information, and many other. And various polarization can also be used for specific application of your interest and the information can be derived to the fullest. Now coming on to NVSAR scape. So, what is NV SARScape? So on the top of NV, we have a dedicated uh, NV SARScape for performing exercises related to the microwave data. So as we all know that nowadays, we are extensively using microwave data because of the advantages that I have told you in almost all of the application in the remote sensing domain that we are working on. Research, research organizations like IITs, uh, various space application centers are using the sensors that are available in the market to the fullest for almost all of the application. In NVSARScape, we have a lot of options and workflows and modules which are simplified to work on the day-to-day -day remote sensing exercises and remote sensing domains and various applications. So that I'll be talking in the subsequent slide what, are, what we have in SARScape, what all modules are present in the SARScape. 
Now, what is SAR script? So as already told, it's a, it's a set of functions dedicated to the generation of product based on the following synthetic aperture radar sensor. So these are the sensors. I have just listed a few of these sensors, which includes LOS Pulsar, NVSAT, RadarSat, Resat, Sentinel-1, many other, uh, and many other sensors are, just, just a few of them I have listed. There are lots of sensors that can are supported, which can be utilized within the Starscape for performing your exercises. Also, some of the airborne SAR systems, which include ESAR, FSAR, Orbisar, and a few other, which are also supported within the Starscape. So why Sarscape? Because uh, because when we are working with the Sarscape, we require a certain dedicated software which in, which can be utilized by the user for performing various applications. So we need a software which can process for processing of SAR intensity image, for interferometry SAR processing, for pole in SAR processing, for differential in SAR processing, and for SAR stereo processing for performing for generating your DEM. So we require high resolution DEM, and as we all know, microwave data scan provide us very high resolution time. So we need certain modules, we need certain workflows that as SARDEM extraction to extract. So here comes the use of SARScape. So all these capabilities are present within SARScape and can be utilized for your application. So I have listed a few of the SAR capabilities, which include score registration, classification, segmentation, decoding and radiometric collaboration. So uh, this is just a gist of the uh, application and the capabilities that I have listed. So which can be, there are lots of capabilities which can be explored when you start using SARScape and you can uh, just start playing with the software and you can get the information to the fullest. Now, coming on to SARScape, so there are a lot of products that are available within the SARScape. So SARScape comes with a lot of modules. So we have basic module, which have uh, basic module, interferometric module, and the stacking module. So basic module includes a set of processing steps for generation of SAR products based on intensity. It includes two other things, which are two other modules, which is the focusing and the filtering module, uh, which can be utilized for performing the analysis related to the focusing and the filtering of the SAR data. Coming on to the interferometric module, this module includes processing of SAR to two phase interferometric in SAR, geometry, in SAR uh, application and in SAR for generation of DEMs, coherence, land displacement, and deformation map study. So, these are very uh, this module is very useful in various applications related to uh, uh, subsidence monitoring, land, uh, land, uh, land displacement monitoring, which are happening uh, after any earthquake event or the volcanic eruption event, event or uh, groundwater, uh, groundwater deformation related studies, uh, and many others. So the interferometric module can be utilized. But in interferometric module is also complemented by the scansar interferometry module which includes the capabilities to process the INSAR and DINSAR data over large areas. So uh, you can, if you are working with the large data sets, large areas, so scansar interferometry module can be utilized in the interferometric module to work on. Next is the interferometric stacking module. So it's based on the SPAS and DPS technique. It enables the user to determine the displacement of the individual features to the maximum level. So you can achieve even the smallest of the smallest accuracy for determining the uh, differences, uh, so, sorry, for displacement of the individual features that are present on the ground. We also have polarimetric, SAR polarimetric uh, option, where you can have the uh, pole in SAR techniques, which is used for performing uh, processing of the polarimetric SAR data. So this was all about uh, the uh, products, uh, uh, the basic modules and the products of the NV SAR scheme. So now uh, in this few, um, in the next coming slides, I have added What's new in uh, SARScape 5.6? So as uh, the latest version of SARScape is 5.6, so lots of capabilities related to the importing of the data, new sensors have been added, which I have listed in uh, in my slides. Uh, uh, and now, in, first of all, starting with the addition of the new sensors. So you must have heard about the Kapala sensor, which is the most uh, hype, which is the most important and most. Uh, fascinating data that the Capilla is providing. So three new sensors have been added, which is the Capilla, RCM, and the CSG. So here you can uh, see I have listed, uh, we have uh, highlighted it with the test. Also one new format, which is the SI, uh, SICD polar format support is uh, now added to NV5.6. And uh, this one is the uh, Capilla uh, space, uh, Capilla data provided 
by the Capilla Space to our partners. We're working with L3 Harris and SAR Maps. So the image courtesy is for Capilla Space provided to the L3 Harris and SARScape. So it's a very high resolution data, which will be uh, which will have which will be having a revisiting time of three to six hour once the 40 satellites will be in the orbit. So it's directly supported in the cap in the NV SARScape 5.6. So you can see how what is the advantage of the uh, so you can see the advantage of NV SARScape in the coming times where you can utilize the latest uh, microwave data for your applications. Now coming on to the Sentinel 2 download. So once we're working with the microwave data, we also need a multispectral data to work on parallelly so as to see how the features are behaving. So in the previous one, there was not an option to download the Sentinel 2 data. So now you can uh, download the Sentinel 2 data within SARScape only, which will allow the user to visually compare the SAR and the optical data within a single method. You can also download a uh, query and download sound Sentinel data, multi-download, which will reduce the uh, downloading time. So uh, this is very important and very uh, specific uh, because when you're working with microwave data, sometimes you require lots of scenes to work on so as to create a baseline. So multiple uh, satellite Sentinel download can be done within the SARScape only. Uh, this is the continuous tomography. So we have added a complete set of tools to process the continuous tomography within SARScape only. So here, it, here you see you can we have added the continuous tomography tool, which will allow it, uh, the users to extract 3D SAR radiometric and geometric reconstruction of the data. Uh, uh, also, uh, we have ready to tool support future satellite missions, biomass ESA for forestry purposes for ap urban applications. Uh, this is also uh, the tomographic uh, slice option that is available, which will uh, provide the elevation slices uh, within the SAR scape only. Now, a um, uh, lot of dim extraction uh, uh, additions to the NV SAR scape. So here we have added uh, the TDM uh, DEM, which is the most recent and available for free, which can be downloaded from the VLR service within NV SAR scape. Also, GMTED 2010 can also be downloaded within the SAR scape uh, for your application uh, in the DEM extraction mode. Now some basic improvements, but very important improvements for various workflows. For example, then downloading to create import data in a single step can be done. Generic SAR data, so various application, uh, oh, sorry, various sample application, various file formats are, are supported. You can import the Sentinel-1 uh, import generic data, focusing X1. Uh, you can download the auxiliary files that are supported in the SARScape working directory and also use them during the processing after the orbit files are deleted. So all these are uh, uh, very important and improvements that are in the latest version of the NV5.6, NV SARScape 5.6. Also some uh, um, improvements related to the multi-looking PS and the SPAS techniques uh, <coughs> within the software. Uh, also uh, one important uh, parameter that we have is the time series analyzer plot. So you can create a time series analyzer plot uh, within NV SARScape only. Uh, also some preferences. So these preferences are very important when we start working with the NV uh, and when we start working with the microwave data, but NV SARScape, it's you can load your preferences in uh, one time only and one uh, till the time you're working, these preferences will remain for the single data. So lots of options available for various uh, uh, sensors that are available, which includes like Tendermax, Sentinel, uh, Pulsar 2, TSX, also some high resolution microwave data, medium resolution data. So whatsoever data you're working on, either commercial or free, you can load your preferences depending upon uh, the data that you're using. Some new resolution, which are specific to ultra high resolution data are added, very high resolution, high resolution, uh, medium and low have been added within the preferences of NV SARS data. So uh, now uh, all about this. Uh, so now the question comes where we can utilize NV SARScape for various for our exercises. So SARScape has a lot of applications uh, in, in various domains related to forestry, urban density mapping, land subsidence, which is very extensively used when we have certain uh, disasters related to earthquake, volcano. So uh, we need to monitor the earthquake so we can use the land subsidence. So land subsidence is happening, so we can use the 
differential in SAR in preferometric techniques to perform that in within any SARScape agriculture monitoring. So you can use it for agriculture exercises, flood mapping to see what are the flood areas extracted from the SAR data on, on the date of events, on the date of events that the flood has happened. Geomorphological related data. Uh, applications, rice mapping, snow mapping, so lots of application in various domains, various application domains, and user has the advantage to work it in a single platform. Uh, the user can apply all his knowledge and take the advantage of the software to work on with the applications. Now, I'll just switch over to the demo. We ha I have just uh, listed one uh, demo related to uh, flood mapping. So uh, we have used a Sentinel-1 data of uh, uh, a pre, uh, this is the pre-event image in my screen and you, it, this is the post-event image in my screen. So uh, I have taken this data for September. So one is of 5th September and other is for uh, 12th September data. Uh, so uh, September data I have taken. So I have used Sarscape intensity, periods, uh, intensity time series workflow to perform the flood flood analysis where I have used this Sentinel-1 data. So here uh, using this, I have generated a filtered flood, flood map to show you how we can extract the flood features. So you can use this workflow. I'm not running the process because it will take a lot of time to run on. So just to show you how we can take the advantage of Sarscape, you can utilize it. Uh, now uh, just showing you how the Sarscape uh, option looks so we have various options related to import data basic this filtering techniques interferometric stacking scans are pools are so all of these tools are available within sarscape uh, uh, over the top of NV. so you can take the advantage of uh, sarscape now uh, one more demo that i'll uh, i'll be showing you is uh, is the uh, ship detection module uh, ship detection so uh, this uh, uh, in this we have uh, taken the advantage of the feature extraction uh, option that is available within the NV Sarscape. So we have used the ship detection feature extraction tool to extract these features. For this, I have used the Gandamax image. Uh, so here you can see these are the ships that uh, ship vessels that are present. So this uh, ship uh, vessels can be uh, ship data, uh, Tendermax data can, is uh, ingested within the ship detection and we have utilized, uh, we have extracted these uh, ships from the <clears throat> from the microwave data directly using the ship detection. So in this way, you can uh, take the advantage of ship detection module, various intensity time, time series workflow and also uh, one more thing that I'll, I'll like to show you is that you can create your own uh, a SARScape model uh, within NV only. So here, if you can see, I have generated uh, INSAR displacement generation module. So just, uh, I'll just, uh, if you can see my screen. So here, for example, uh, you can define your input parameters, which is the master image, slave image, DEMs. If you have any GCP files, you can describe that. You can define the Sasuke preferences. After that, you're all done. You can generate your model related to the exercise that you're performing on. So for example, I have generated an inside displacement model. So you can use that if you are generating a flood extraction model. So you can generate a flood extraction model. So the SARScape applications are also now, the SARScape model can now also be generated within NV module. Uh, so which will help you uh, reiterate your processes if you are working on multiple satellite data sets. So you can uh, create NV model and run it every time you're running. So uh, you can take this advantage of the NV model. Now coming back again, uh, on the presentation part. Now uh, I'll move on to the introduction to Sarscape Analytics Toolbox. So Sarscape and the Sarscape is very, uh, 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 so you require a lot of microwave data processing information to work on. But uh, the NP uh, H3 and SAR map has made toolbox. Uh, so L3 Harris Geospatial and SAR maps, uh, they have created an easy to use tool for SAR, most common SAR processing application. So which is the uh, which is the NV SAR analytics? So this SAR analytics can be utilized within NV Desktop, NV Modeler, as well as SAR Pro. 
So if you have, uh, if you have ArcPro and NV, so you can use, utilize the NV Sarscape analytics within Pro also, or uh, within NV also. You can also create a model. So uh, uh, what is a Sarscape analytics toolbox? So Sarscape analytics toolbox is a set of application, commonly used application uh, for uh, which are commonly used in the day-to-day -day, uh, remote sense, microwave data remote sensing. So we, they have listed it in a dedicated workflow so as to work on. So I have listed in the table the advantages of uh, Sarscape analytics and Sarscape. So if I focus on to Sarscape, so you can see it's very user friendly. All in one, in, all in one workflows includes world leading Sarscape algorithms which are running at the back end. So uh, the most important thing is you require very basic knowledge on SAR system and techniques, so as to work with the SAR analytics toolbox. On the other hand, uh, you require a very good knowledge on the SAR system and techniques to work with the Sarscape thing. So. Uh, depending upon your uh, depending upon your skills, depending upon your new knowledge, you can utilize any of the technologies to work on to get on the meaningful information from your from your data. Uh, now coming on to the Sarscape. So around so we have ten workflows present in the NV uh, Sarscape analytics. I'll go one by one. So what we can uh, do it. Uh, what uh, what the tool is giving us. What uh, we have what we can do with the tools and what we can do with the workflows that we have present. So uh, these are the benefit of applications of Sarscape. Now, starting on with the Sentinel-1 download. So we can query and download the Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 data from the ESA Scientific Hub using NV Sarscape Analytics. SAR image geocoding. So this tool uh, geocodes a SAR image characterized by intensity information. So basically geocoding is uh, is required to uh, is a process of resampling your SAR image from the radar geometry to, uh, to uh, regularize it on the geographic edge. So we require SAR image geocoding. So you can take advantage of image SAR image geocoding for doing that. SAR time series. This tool uh, creates a geocoded multi-temporal statistics from intensity images to detect and extract structure on or any temporal changes that can be used for segmentation and declassification purpose. So here I have listed the possible applications uh, using SAR time series, which can be done using SAR time series, which includes your land use analysis, which, which includes crop and forest monitoring, natural disaster monitoring, and change detection for illegal movements or any other activity. Now SAR flood mapping. So this tool creates a classification raster that shows the flood area. So as I already showed you, so you can do it that, uh, SAR flood mapping in SAR analytics also. So you can you know, create a flood map which will show you the flood and the non flood areas uh, depending upon the intensity of the SAR. So this uh, tool, in this flood mapping tool, we consider a post flood event SAR image and a pre event SAR image and them for our area of interest to perform the analysis. So in this uh, SAR skip analytics, one thing I want to highlight that all the processes that are in between them will be run at the back end of this software, or back end of this application. So the user needs to just define the input and some parameters and you'll get the output. Very easy to use with a very basic SAR knowledge to get the maximum of the SAR data. SAR ship detection. So it, it includes, uh, the, it also requires some AIS information for accurately matching. So it rec uh, allows detecting ships over water bodies derived by the SAR images and you need to correlate this info with the AS info if available. Now this are change detection. So we are continuously hearing and doing change detection over our multispectral data for various applications like agriculture monitoring, forest monitoring, uh, urban uh, change detection. So this can now also be done using SAR data. So this tool creates a classification raster that identifies changes between two images. Performs It performs amplitude and phase analysis so amplitude analysis use the intensity of the SAR images to track changes over the time uh, within uh, this tool. And phase analysis use the coherence to track the changes. So you can, you're taking the advantages of the amplitude as well as the phase analysis within a single tool and you can see how our change detection is performing. So for this, I'll be also showing a demo that we created for SAR change detection. Now SAR DEM extraction, so it's, uh, as the name suggests, you can create DEM based on the interferometric data pairs that are using. So you can ingest 
your SAR data, high resolution SAR data to create high resolution DEMs for any other applications that you are working on. So very easy to use for various topographic analysis. You can do that, very easy to use and you can utilize it to the fullest. Now coming on to the SAR displacement mapping. So it, this tool uh, uses a pair of SAR images to show the land motion over time from first to second image. Uh, the commonly used application uh, of this SAR displacement mapping for generating your interferogram for differential interferogram generation is after the events such as earthquakes, volcanoes, landslide, collapsing or collapsing of the dam. So we have certain displacement happening over the area over the land. So you can monitor that. You can map the displacement and uh, using the SAR displacement mapping tool using SAR analytics. Now coming on to the end one, which is the SAR persistence scatter. So this tool is used to monitor the temporary, uh, temporal evolution of surface deformation. So if you're working with the time series data, you can use the SAR persistence scattering tool. So this tool will help to monitor displacement based on the identification of the persistence scatters and also on the comparison uh, of interferometric phase between several acquisitions. So the advantages can be, uh, uh, sorry, the application for this SAR persistence scattering can be monitoring of the civil infrastructures that are, as already mentioned on the ground, natural monitoring, which includes the ground surface deformation. So we need a time series data to monitor the ground surface deformation for it uh, used basically for in the uh, groundwater exercises where it takes a lot of time for the deformation to happen. So we need a past data to work on and uh, we we can take the advantage of SAR persistence scatter for this purpose. Now coming on uh, to the supported sensor. So these all are the sensors that are supported uh, within SARScape uh, analytics, which includes like a loss pulsar, a loss pulsar 2, Sentinel-1, Reset, Radarset-1, Radarset-2, Terrasar, and uh, And also the formats are also listed uh, along with the sensor which are supported within SARScape analytics. So all of the majorly used sensors that we are con uh, commonly using in the microwave data processing are supported within SARScape analytics. So uh, also uh, there are some, uh, uh, this SAR analytics require the following properties which are very important uh, to uh, consider when you're working with the SARScape analytics. So we require the same sensor when we are working on same acquisition geometry, same incidence angles, data type, and same polarization to work on uh, with the workflows that we have uh, listed on the upper side of these properties. Now, uh, uh, SARScape uh, supports data in uh, uh, <clears throat> in in geographic coordinate system, UTM projection. Also, the output coordinate system is also based on them, which can be uh, GC, GCS, WGS84, and the UTM projection, so all uh, major uh, supported coordinate system. So here, here in this screenshot, uh, what you can uh, see is uh, the SAR analytics uh, toolbox. So this toolbox is present, uh, it's a screenshot of ArcGIS Pro. So where you can see the all the SAR analytics engine toolbox that are uh, that are present within SAR analytics. Uh, here you can see SAR change detection chart, uh, SAR change detection classification refinement. So you can do the refinement techniques, SAR dam extraction, SAR displacement mapping, SAR flood mapping, and image geocoding, uh, and also the persistence scatter. Also, we have an SAR analytics in the management where you can uh, SAR, you, uh, you can save your repository directory and do it for the analysis of your data. Uh, now coming on to uh, the demo part of this, uh, just a minute, I'll tell you what we have considered in this. Uh, so for this uh, demo, we have, uh, I have tried to create a SAR change detection classification using the SAR images. Uh, for this uh, application, uh, as I've already explained that this SAR tool uh, uh, this SAR change detection uh, identifies changes between two images uh, and form the amplitude and phase analysis. Uh, so the amplitude analysis uses uh, the intensity of the SAR images to provide over the time. So here, if you see, it's a screenshot of the SAR change detection tool that is uh, that is uh, present within NVSAR analytics. Uh, 
uh, where you can see you can you need to define the later image which is the post image uh, the pre-image AOI if you have any you can define the demo option you also divide, need to define the output uh, output coordinate system so depending upon the data that you are working on uh, you can define uh, the state hemisphere uh, projection zone ellipsoid and the reference height if any so, uh, depending upon the data that you are working on you can define your dem if you have any pre uh, made dem pre extracted dem from any of the high resolution data you can define the input dem also you need to define these parameters depending upon the data you need to define the grid size whether you can if the optional one you can go either by default or you can define depending upon whatsoever data that you are using so after that you are done with all these parameters uh, you just need to click ok and uh, so all the processes that are working at the back end uh, will be like for example if you're working in the sad change detection techniques for the uh, for the post uh, in this demo we have created a pre-fire and a post-fire we have taken a pre-fire and a post-fire data of sentinel one top char mode which is acquired one acquired on 5th november 2018 and other one on the 11th november 2018 uh having same polarization which is the vh polarization that is happening so if we look at uh, the process that we uh, do generally for performing the SAR change detection we first take a pre-fire intensity image then take a post-fire intensity image but before that, we uh, need to geocode these images so you can use the advantage of SAR image geocoding for doing that. Uh, also, uh, with, uh, which will help to ingest the data in a geocode format. So first, the events evolved uh, in between this is a pre-fire intensity image we will take which and the post-fire. And also then after that, we need to create a ratio of the post and the pre-fire intensity image. After that, we will incorporate the term and the coherence image will be generated and a final change detection map will get. So all these process, if we are going by in the SARScape or uh, the other thing, we need to do it at our own by following a step-by-step -step procedure, but NV SARScape analytics. So uh, uh, for example, if an end user has a very basic knowledge, so you, you can just want to perform the change detection uh, using SAR. So you can do this, just give the input and you'll get the output. So here, if you see, uh, after performing that, uh, we got uh, this output. So I'll just show you within the app pro only. Uh, if you can see my screen, yes. So I can show you. So I have already filled all this data. I won't run this process because it takes some time. So here you see the image one, image two. You need to define an AOI if you have any. So I've already defined a shape file over this. Uh, you can need to define it EM, define the output coordinate system. Uh, go, or you can uh, define the grid size, or you can go by default, uh, and you can define the output folder and just run. So you'll get the output like this. So here, if you see, we have generated a change detection map based on the pre event and the post event uh, images. So with certain classes. You can see a red indicate the significant changes, blue indicates the significant changes, reflectivity decrement, humidity decrement, green indicates, yellow also the humidity increments and the changes. Uh, uh, so this way you can do the analysis. Also, uh, uh, just to show you like this thing in the in the live uh, uh, demonstration. So you, you can see these are analytics engine, uh, also various SAR displacement mapping, SAR flood mapping, uh, this, this all can be done within uh, the NVSAR scape, uh, within the Arc Pro. So uh, we uh, we had a background that Arc Pro, uh, <clears throat> Arc Pro is only restricted in performing GS data analysis, but nothing like that. You can even now process the microwave data uh, using both our platforms, uh, NVSAR scape and Arc Pro. Uh, so you can take the advantage of GIS as a letter as well as remote sensing within arc pro within the s3 technology you can create your beautiful maps you can take this data you can publish this data over your server you can create a story map for example uh, in in this change detection analysis what you can what we can do is if you're working 
uh, if we are working uh, on the multi control data and we need to present it to the organization like we need we can create a, a very beautiful story map or a very beautiful story around this uh, flood detection uh, you can ingest the uh, multispectral data also of the same area of the same time period you can create how it has affected people what are the areas affected which needs to be looked on, looked on uh, so that the agencies can really uh, look into those areas and help the uh, most uh, and help the people which are most affected with uh, with the short span of time and provide them with the uh, most important uh, health aid and other parameters so uh, you can take the uh, so uh, here uh, so you, here you can see how microwave data can really be helpful during natural calamities and uh, 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 for natural disaster related things so now uh, this one was all related to nvsar scape and nvsar analytics now uh, to sum up on the things so uh, when uh, we have a geonet community where all the users can sign up and join so this geonet history community helps the user to get the information about the latest updates that are happening uh, within the technology latest trends latest technologies uh, that are coming related to the gis related to the developing part online part enterprise part pro uh, so uh, you people can join in over here uh, you can see how uh, how we can take advantage of the uh, uh, softwares to for our specific application